The 17 News at Noon podcast is brought to you by Clinica Sierra Vista. Welcome back to the 17 News at Noon podcast, where we share your news on your schedule. Good afternoon, and thanks for joining us for the News at Noon. I'm Alex Fisher. Here we go again. Coronavirus in Kern County has found new life in our area as it reemerges to infect more people. We are still in our third wave, and although the spread was worse in early September, cases are once again back on the rise. This morning we learned another 969 people have been infected with the virus. We also learned of another four people who lost their lives. 226 people are in the hospital with more severe symptoms of COVID-19. 56 are in the ICU. And open enrollment has begun for covered California health care coverage. Covered California is an independent part of the state government that provides access to physical and mental health care. This open enrollment period goes from now until January 31st and will cover your health care expenses for the 2022 year. For more information, you can visit CoveredCA.gov. The Sheriff's Office is, inv is investigating a shooting that left a man dead in South Bakersfield early yesterday morning. Deputies were called to McKee Road near South Union Avenue around 4 a.m. for a report of a shooting. When they arrived, they say they found a man who had been shot several times. Investigators say they believe the victim was involved in a fight with the suspect before the shooting. The Sheriff's Office did not release a description of a possible shooter. Meantime, the Sheriff's Office opened another investigation after a man was found dead in Fraser Park early Saturday morning in the driveway of his home. Deputies were called to the area of San Carlos and San Fernando trails at about 7 o'clock Saturday morning. When they arrived, they say they found the man with trauma to his upper body. Deputies are investigating the death as a homicide. If you know anything about this case, you're asked to call the Sheriff's Office at 861-3110 or the secret witness line at 322-4040. The Tulare County Sheriff's Office has arrested two men in the case of a man found dead in Tulare County two weeks ago. This is the scene from an arrest in Delano related to the case. Deputies say the body of 58 year old Douglas Klein was found in a Terra Bella orchard on October 15th. On Thursday, several law enforcement agencies, including Kern's Auto Theft Task Force, served search warrants in five addresses spread between Terra Bella, Early Mart, and Delano. Deputies arrested 23-year-old Jesus Menjarez and 38-year-old Dan Eli Perez and booked them into Tulare County Jail for murder. Detectives also found 12 guns, a grenade launcher, and a stash of drugs. Law enforcement says the third suspect, identified as 24-year-old Jose Reyes, is still on the run. Now to dangers on the road as a rock slide blocked part of Highway 178 overnight. Officers were called to the area of 178 just east of the mouth of the canyon in Bakersfield for a report of a boulder partially falling onto a car at about 930 last night. CHP says the rocks were blocking westbound traffic for about or about two to three miles into the canyon. One person was reportedly hurt when the rocks came crashing down. The roadway has since been cleared. Starting today, a bank account boost could be coming for people living here in Kern County as another round of stimulus checks are issued. This is part of the Golden State Stimulus Package. Most people who make less than $75,000 a year will receive between six dollars and $1,100. Some payments have already gone out via direct deposit, but those waiting for checks in Bakersfield could receive theirs before Thanksgiving. For the zip code mailing timeframes, just visit our website, KGET. Dot com. Hello, this is Tim Callahan with Clinica Sierra Vista, and we're excited to unveil the Community Health Center of the Future, our comprehensive care center. It's located right across the street from Memorial Hospital. We have every service under one roof, from family medicine, OBGYN care, dental services for adults and children, behavioral health, and much more. So find your way to better care at Clinica Sierra Vista this year at our comprehensive care center. Visit our website, clinicasierravista.org, for the latest on this project. We'll see you soon. Welcome back and American Airlines has canceled more than 1500 flights since Friday over disruptions it blamed on staffing problems and high winds at its busiest hub. A large majority of those flight disruptions occurred at Dallas Fort Worth International Airport. No flights out of Bakersfield's Meadowsfield Airport appear to be impacted. The airline says the cancellations were partly caused by severe weather that hit North Texas last week. 
Staffing issues also played a role in the delays. The company says most customers are being rebooked the same day. Well, a new dating app is gaining followers and it has not even launched. It's called Thursday and the premise is a little different than apps like Tinder or Tinder or Bumble. That's because Thursday can only be used on Thursdays. Go figure. The creators say they hope by restricting how often the app can be used, it will actually force people to meet in person and go on an actual date. And if you like someone, you better make your move because all stories, chats, and matches disappear at the stroke of midnight. The app rolls out in New York and in London in April. Actor Alec Baldwin has broken his silence about the deadly shooting of a cinematographer that took place on the Rust film set. He and his wife stopped on a road in Vermont on Saturday and talked publicly about the shooting for the first time. Baldwin said that cinematographer Helena Hutchins was a friend. Investigators say they believe Baldwin's prop gun fired a single live round that killed Hutchins and wounded director Joel Souza on the film set in New Mexico. I'm not allowed to make any comments because it's an ongoing investigation. I've been ordered by the Sheriff's Department in Santa Fe. I can't answer any questions about the investigation. I can't. It's an active investigation in terms of a woman dying. She was my friend. She was my friend. The day I arrived in Santa Fe to start shooting, I took her to dinner with Joel, the director. We were a very, very, excuse me, we were a very, very, you know, well-oiled crew shooting a film together, and then this horrible event happened. Now, I've been told multiple times, don't make any comments about the ongoing investigation, and I can't. I can't. I can't. Baldwin also said he is interested in discussions to limit the use of guns in movie productions. He said he stopped to talk to the press so that photographers would not st would stop following his family. Authorities say they're still investigating the shooting. And Bakersfield's Larry Zanoff knows what must be going through the minds of movie professionals still trying to process that tragedy. He works as a movie armor, the guy who procures, inspects handles, and sometimes hands off prop guns on film sets. And Zanoff, who developed much of his expertise with firearms decades ago as a soldier in the Israeli army, says it's almost inconceivable that a gun containing a live round could have found its way onto the movie set, much less placed in the hands of an actor rehearsing a scene. Is there any reason to have live cartridges on a television film set? The answer is no. Our own industry guidelines, safety bullet number one, clearly states that there is no reason to ever have live ammunition on set. Um, obviously, safety is the reason for that. Uh, and so that is, that's the guideline that we're supposed to follow. Yeah. Zanoff, who said he sees no reason to remove prop guns from films, film sets as long as storage and handling protocols are strictly followed, still lives in Northeast Bakersfield. And you can hear more from Zanoff's exclusive interview with 17's Robert Price on our website, KGET.com. Well, animal rights activists want Major League Baseball to change the name of the area where relievers warm up. Instead of calling the area the bullpen, PETA wants to call it the arm barn. PETA says arm barn is a more animal friendly term. The group also says the word bullpen mocks the misery of sensitive animals. This isn't the first time PETA has gone after Major League Baseball. In August, the group asked the Cleveland Guardians to add a vegan hot dog mascot to the hot dog derby tradition. The 17 News at Noon podcast is a production of KGET and Nexstar Media Group. For more on all of the headlines in today's show, head to KGET.com.